Hello, this is Scott. So today we're continuing our sessions on time series and forecasting using R and R Studio. We've covered a number of different topics uh, in this series. We covered plots in video one and video two. We did statistics and the autocorrelation function or ACF. And we've covered some simple uh, forecast methods like the drift, uh, naive, seasonal naive, um, and average forecast methods in video three. And today we're going to talk about uh, transformations right here. So, uh, and then next time we'll talk about evaluating forecast accuracy. So, we're going to be using the library uh, FPP from the, or I'm sorry, package FPP from this. Uh, book right here that I've been recommending for you as, as a resource and we'll jump right into our studio now and talk about uh, transformations actually before we do that let me there is a, just a tiny bit of a math here that we need to talk about so we're today we're going to talk about mathematical transformations um, where that's needed is when we have an inconsistent variation across the level of the series we'll look at that actually with a plot um, we'll also talk about calendar adjustments, and we'll talk the first two topics hands-on in R, and then we'll make some brief comments about population and inflation, inflation adjustments. But this mathematical transformation, we're going to talk about Box-Cox transforms. So this uh, this this top equation is a Box-Cox transform. It has one parameter called lambda. So when lambda is actually zero, then you're just taking the log of the series. Yt is the series itself, time series. Um, if lambda is not equal to zero, then you essentially use this formula. So it's the series y sub t to the power of lambda minus one, that quantity divided by lambda. Um, so that's the transformation that remedies unequal variation across the level of a series. And then once you do your analysis um, and your forecasting and everything, then you can use this back transform to uh, put the series back into the original scale that was used um, as, as the series itself, Y sub T, the time series. Now, you may be asking yourself, okay, well, why are we even doing this, this box Cox transforms? Why don't we just leave it unequal? It's because a lot of the methods that we'll be using down the road are going to assume that the variation across the level of the series is constant. So we are learning this as a, a method early on. Um, it's a, it's a remedial measure, measure that we're going to have to do with our data before we can actually do use some of these these techniques if we run into this. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll uh, load this package, and then we'll take a plot. This is essentially I'm plotting this variable E L E C, which is the raw electricity demand. So this is the variable in its raw format. If I do that, I can see here, sure enough, I've got low variation in the beginning, and then I've got quite a bit of variation um, as this level of the, when I mean level of the series, I mean as Y increases. So as Y increases, the variation goes up. So I don't, I don't really want this. An easy way to approach this is just with a log. So I'm going to run this. This is just taking the, this, the only difference. Uh, in this command here, is I'm now taking the log of this variable. If I do that, it looks like I have in, uh, improved the series, but maybe even a little bit too much because here towards the top, the variation is actually going down um, from the middle of the series. So what I can do is I can use that box Cox transform, but I've got to figure out what lambda is. Fortunately for us, I can use R's power to uh, determine the appropriate lambda, which I'm highlighting now. And so if I run that, and if I were to push this down, I would see my result is 0.2654. So about 0.27, right? And I stored that in this lambda variable, 
and now I'm going to plot the series um, here as well. So now I've got a better series. Um, if I go back, I can look at the original. I can move forward, and I can see that this is more appropriate for what we want to do. Um, so that's making a box cox transformation. The second thing that we talked about doing is calendar adjustments. If I take demand and I'm using taking demand by month, well, if there's 31 days in August and there, um, you know, 28 days in February, that's really not on par since I've got three additional days. You could also use work days of the month. Um, Etc. So you need to use the appropriate adjustment, but what basically what we're doing is we're normalizing uh, the data and so here what I've done is I've created a uh, a vector of days of the days of the year um, So 31 for January 28 for February 31 for March Etc on through December and then for this particular data that I'm using, I've got 14 years of data, so I'm putting 14 in here. And going one step further, we're actually um, replacing leap year data with 29 instead of the 28 that we first input. The, this third command, this par command, is means that I'm going to I'm going to put two plots in one visual panel, and then um, I'm going to plot the raw demand, which is milk. And then I'm going to uh, plot normalized or um, milk, average milk. So I'm going to divide by the days of the month. So if I do those two plots right here, um, then I get, let me do that again. I'm sorry. So if I do, I, if I run, execute this series of statements, and I get two different plots. And so you can see here, um, for the, the raw demand by month, there's quite a bit of variability. In fact, January to February, it dipped down. Um, but I see when I normalize that it increases from January to February because I'm dividing now by 28 in February instead of 31 for January. Again, you can see pounds here per cow is you know in, in the 600 to 900 range. And of course, when I'm taking the average, um, you know, I'm decreasing my scale there, but you can see that it smoothed out the series, and that's an important part um, of, of time series is to try to reduce this noise level that we've got going on. The uh, next comment is about population adjustments. So if I'm comparing uh, states, California versus you know Delaware, I need to adjust for uh, populations. Um, often in healthcare. You'll talk about, as an example, you'll talk about inpatient days per thousand. That's what I have here. Um, that just normalizes the, based upon the number of patients that you have. You talk about insurance. Oftentimes you talk about per member per month um, uh, statistics, say dollars per member per month, et cetera. And then lastly, uh, inflation, inflation adjustment. So in, in finance, you may talk about the inflation adjusted return rather than the, the actual return. So um, in inflation adjusted dollars. All right, so that concludes this quick session. Um, next time, again, we'll be talking about evaluating forecast accuracy. You can send me an email. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Thank you very much. See you next time.